Hi, it's Dave T here, and as a keen cyclist, I've been taking bikes with me when camping and caravanning for more than 20 years. So in this video, I'm going to try and cover pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to taking bikes with you on a caravan trip. If you are after advice on a particular aspect, I'll bookmark the various parts of the video in the description below so you can jump straight to them. Or if you have any questions, then ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Probably the first thing you need to consider is how to transport the bikes. And there are about six general locations where you can consider carrying bikes when towing. Before I get into that, I'll just cover the most important consideration generally, and that is weight. A typical bike weighs in at between 15 and 20 kilos, but the type of bike can increase that weight quite drastically. Generally speaking, mountain bikes and e-bikes, which I'll talk about in more detail later, weigh more than road bikes. So the first and perhaps most obvious place to transport bikes is on the roof of the car. To do this, you will typically need to buy roof bars to run across the car and then bike racks to attach them. There are several brands on the market and I've used full racks for years and they are more expensive but well made with features such as locks for fixing both the bike and the rack to the roof bars. There are two varieties of roof mounted racks, ones that take the whole bike and those where you need to take the front wheel off of the bike first. If you have a mountain bike with a more, let's say, exotic shape, then you may, like me, find that you have to use the wheel removal type. They have the advantages also of reducing the weight on the roof, but you may want to buy a wheel bag to keep your car clean, especially if riding off-road. If you're keeping the wheel on, then you can make life easier for yourself when loading the bikes on by tying the front wheel to the frame with a strap like this. The next most obvious place is to put the bikes on the rear tailgate of the car. This makes loading and unloading easier, but does limit access to the boot of the car without unloading all of the bikes. There are some rear car racks that attach to the tow bar. Obviously, these are going to be out of the question when actually towing. The last remaining car-based option is actually inside the car itself. This will, of course, depend on the size of your car and the size and number of bikes. Unless it is a folding cycle, I'd recommend dismantling the bike by removing the front and rear wheels and pedals. You can buy bike bags or cases to hold the bikes, which will certainly keep other items in the car away from dirty chains, etc. But these aren't cheap and they will take probably a little bit more space. The only real advantage of this option is it's probably the most secure against theft. When carrying bikes in or on the caravan, weight is the biggest concern and you need to ensure that you are not going to exceed the caravan's maximum loaded weight. You, in terms of carrying bikes on the caravan, there are some carriers that mount here on the A-frame. I haven't tried these and my main concern would be weight, especially on the tow bar. Our first caravan had a rear door to the back corner of the van, which accessed the area underneath the rear bunk beds and allowed bikes to be stored there but to get the bike through the door was quite awkward and required the handlebars to be turned. The weight was at the rear of the van, which is not ideal, but it was secure since the bikes were out of sight. Though of course it did mean that the bed could not be used without unloading the bikes. I personally wouldn't recommend carrying the bike inside the main area of the caravan unless you can securely tie it down. I have in the past looked into putting a rack on the back wall of the caravan. However, I was put off by a study undertaken by Bath University along with Bailey of Bristol. Adding weight to the rear of any trailer increases your inertia. This can, as you can see in the linked video, cause significant stability issues, especially at speed, so is not recommended. If you are taking more expensive bikes with you, then storage and security is something to think about when you leave them on site. Probably the first thing to consider is insurance, since many policies do not cover bikes unless they are locked to a solid immovable object. Whilst I haven't tested this theory, this clause will likely mean that your insurance will not cover you unless you can find something like a lamppost nearby. That's why I've always tried to make sure I secure the bikes as well as possible rather than relying on insurance. We used to lock our bikes to the chassis of the caravan. 
The main issue with this approach is that to reach the chassis, I had to use a cable lock, and cable locks tend to be easier to cut by bike thieves. There's also a concern that potential thieves may try and cut the actual chassis of the caravan to steal the bike. Our latest method has been to lock the bikes to the wheels of the caravan using a shorter but much stronger Kryptonite Evolution Series 4 1016 integrated bike chain lock, as well as using one or more shackle and high quality cable locks. Now I'm sure people may well say in the comments that if someone wants to steal it, you can't stop them, which is of course totally true. But my intention here is to make it as bloody difficult for them as possible, either to put them off or at least to annoy them. Also, the combination of all of these locks tied to the wheels of the caravan makes not only the bikes, but the caravan itself harder to steal. I've had an idea for a while to make a portable ground anchor to lock the bikes to. If you're interested in me trying that idea out, then let me know in the comments below. As a final note about storing bikes when on site, then bike covers can be purchased for as little as 15 quid, and both keep the bikes out of the elements as well as away from prying eyes. Like us, a lot of people are starting to use e-bikes, which is a great way for people that are less fit to get into cycling. Taking e-bikes on caravanning holidays does, however, raise a couple of specific questions. The first and perhaps least obvious is weight, since e-bikes are almost always significantly heavier than traditional bikes. This is particularly true of lower cost e-bikes, where the money spent on batteries and motors tend to be saved by using cheaper and heavier components, such as the frame and wheels. Bear this in mind when when choosing your method of transporting bikes. Also, it is a lot harder to remove the front wheel on certain designs of bikes which have a front wheel motor. This may mean that certain types of roof racks are not an option. It also means that it is not possible to reduce the weight of the parts of the bike that go onto the rack. The second consideration is the charging of e-bikes, particularly if staying off grid with no access to mains power. It is possible to find 12 volt based chargers for e-bike batteries, but be aware that the wiring con and connection points of e-bike batteries is not standard so you should research this carefully. The batteries store a large amount of energy often rivaling the size of most leisure batteries so if you're thinking of charging them from solar then you are likely to need a significant size of panels and ideally you should try and charge the bike battery little and often. The best option we have found is to ensure that they are charged before we leave home and then take advantage of the battery charging facilities that many off-grid sites offer. Trust me, from my personal experience, there is nothing worse than going to the trouble of taking a bike on holiday, only to then not be able to use it due to lack of tools or parts to repair it. So to avoid this, I would recommend at a minimum taking a pump and puncture repair kit and ideally a spare inner tube with you. Ideally, you should also have at least enough tools to remove the wheels, but a basic dedicated bike multi-tool with specific tools such as chain breakers built in is not that expensive and a good idea to carry with you when you ride. If you have derailleur gears on your bike and especially if you intend riding off-road an optional extra item to buy and take with you is a spare gear hanger. This is a small piece of metal that the rear derailleur hangs from and is designed to bend or break in case of an accident to avoid breaking the frame or derailleur. These are very specific to the bike and therefore not something you can easily buy from a random bike shop whilst away. It might well be that you have to order it and wait several days even weeks to get it. They can easily get bent if the bike is crashed or dropped and once bent it is almost impossible to straighten correctly which will cause the gears to skip or worse. The type of bike you take camping depends greatly on the type of cycling you want to do. But if you are already a keen cyclist, then it is likely that the part of the attraction of cycling when camping is to ride on country lanes, bridleways and at various forest centres. If you decide to get a mountain bike so that you can ride off off of paved roads, then I would recommend not going for a full suspension bike unless you have a sizable budget. For occasional off-road riding, chunkier tyres and decent tread are more than enough and perhaps front suspension for a gentler ride. When it comes to bicycles in general, there is an old engineering saying, weight, cost or strength, pick two. 
a full suspension bike is always going to be heavier and even more so if savings have been made on other components to cover the cost of the rear suspension system. If your main reason for purchasing a bike is for taking it away in the caravan or motorhome then weight should be your main consideration which will make both transporting it and riding it much more pleasurable. Folding bikes are an obvious choice for transportation if space is an issue. However it's really worth remembering that a folding bike does still take up a fair bit of space and can't generally be carried on racks. Also their smaller wheels and general form factor can limit the road surfaces on which they can be used. They are most probably appropriate for motorhome users where you've got no particular lack of space to store it and when the main use is going to be on road for shorter trips. Also, if you are planning longer trips or using your bike for shopping, then consider either a backpack or some kind of racks or bags for the bike. If you've watched this much of the video, then you probably already want to take cycles with you when camping, caravanning or motorhoming. Cycling is a great way to explore more of the countryside around where you are staying, whether as a means, means of popping to local shops for supplies or just recreation and exercise. Campsites offer a great opportunity to stay close to great places to cycle. This is especially true of CL sites if you are a caravan club member or CS sites if you are in the camping club. CL and CS sites are small sites, frequently on farms, where a maximum of five vans or tents may stay. There are over 2,200 CL sites and about 1,300 CS sites, covering most of the UK. Their size means that they are far more likely to be in more remote locations, which is perfect if you're looking for less busy roads to cycle on or off-road tracks to explore. If you're interested in cycling a specific route, then there is a fairly high likelihood that there is a CL or CS site within cycling distance of the route itself. Whatever your interest or reasons for taking bikes with you on camping and caravanning trips, I hope this video has given you some useful information, and if it has, then please do hit that like button. Also, if you're interested in seeing other videos that I make, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. But most of all, thanks for watching.